and what I see is the 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 tie that binds when it comes to the climate change agenda, whether it be COP twenty one, the Paris Accord, you know, the Paris Climate Agreement, as they like to put it, Agenda twenty one, Agenda twenty thirty, coming out of the United Nations, the the common denominator in all this is something called technocracy. Um, that one of those tankers, just one produces more CO2 than every single car on the planet. (laughs) Wow. I mean, when you just take that into account, that's why I say you're here, then you got your, your, your corporations. And especially in this globalist environment, when we have these international shipping tankers creating more CO2 than every car on the planet, just one, and they're, hundreds if not thousands of these crossing the pacific every day um they create ship tracks these are these are chemtrails granddaddy um these are basically clouds that come off of these international ships that are 50 100 miles wide and sometimes three to ten thousand miles long i see four main factors in this ruin the ocean, kill trees, kill bacteria, artificial clouds, and finally, geoengineering. The importance factor, the most important thing on the planet is human resources, um, controlling all the humans. But the, the second most important thing on the planet is water resources, because water is life. And if you can control water, or as Lyndon Baines Johnson, our president, said, he who controls the weather controls the world. Um, that was back in the sixties. So, you know, this is long in the planning, um, you know, of these, these, uh, technocrats and bureaucrats. Um, uh, this is a friend of mine from MIT university, Dr. Rick Shankman. He put out an article called genetically modified, whether the tail of frost band synthetic bacteria, and it was also known as ice minus pseudomonas. And then we have the problem of accidental geoengineering. And this is a shot from Climate Viewer 3D, which is climateviewer.org, my 3D map. Um, you can bring up the satellite um, imagery for every day all the way back to like 2002. And you can see these very long lines in here. And these are the ship tracks. And all of this creates what's called marine stratocumulus. And these clouds basically blanket the entire Pacific Ocean. If the time and place of seeding is selected with care, the climate effect of cirrus thinning can be enhanced. For that, only long wave warming effects of cirrus clouds should be targeted, and their solar effects should be avoided. Now, I'm going to translate this, so don't, don't trip out. Um, this can be achieved if seeding is limited to high latitude winters or to nighttime seeding. This is, the, this is what's going on today. Um, all behind, you know, closed doors. Um, the last one I'll throw you is from the ICAO Colloquium on Aviation and Climate Change 2010. Um, and Dr. Ulrich uh, Schumann, the world's top expert on chemtrails, contrails, plane farts, he said, we want less warming and more cooling contrails predictable for operational planning. Oh, my God. That just scares so, to me. This is not this is not conspiracy theory. These are straight out of the mouths of scientists interviewing the head of the FAA. I didn't pull these from conspiracies. I pulled these from Google Scholar.